Good morning from Panhandle Outdoors, America's only daily outdoor TV show. Your source for fishing, hunting, and information for folks who enjoy the great outdoors. Now sit back, relax. It's Panhandle Outdoors. Good morning, folks. Welcome to Panhandle Outdoors. I'm Winston Chester. I'm so glad you're here this morning. We've got a great show lined up, a special guest here in the studio. But first, our weather brought to us by Hainted Technical Center. And don't forget the big job fair this weekend. Going to be a lot of folks out there at the Gulf Coast and also. Y'all be there, and uh, there's a lot of, a lot of uh, good jobs opening, so check it out. Looking at a high today, all the way up to 72 degrees. It's, it's like summer, springtime in, in February. Low tonight, only 61. Water temperature, all important water temperature is finally come back up to 60 degrees in the Gulf. Been in the 50s now for a couple of weeks, so 60 degrees this morning. Our river reading, take a look at the Appalachicola at Bluntstown, and even 16 foot. It's got a sharp drop today, that means it closed the gate, so it's going to be a drop in the day. And it looks like it'll be dropping on through the weekend if you want to go river fishing and catch some of those catfish coming out of the sloughs while it's dropping out. Now the Choctaw at Caraville, about the same story, just a slow, steady drop. It's not controlled by dam or anything, just a little bit of a slow, steady drop right there. Take a look at our tide chart, brought to us by Kent Forest Lawn here on 23rd Street, low at 732 this morning and high at 1029 tonight. Not a lot of strong tide today, and the south, the marine forecast will be south, southeast at about six. So not a lot of movement as far as our tidal, uh, tidal flow and all. So let's take a break, and we'll be right back with our special guest. Welcome back, folks, and welcome to a young man I've been trying to get on here for a long time. He finally made it this morning, Chris Kramer. Good morning. Good morning, sir. How are you? I'm doing great. Chris, and y'all know Bill Kramer, Chevrolet, and all, they've been with us since day one. They've been great advertisers and sponsors of Panhandle Outdoors, and I've used to get Jack Simmons and some of those other boys coming on, but we got we got one of the big dogs with us this morning. <laughs> Glad to have you. Good to be here. Thank you for having me. Well, one thing, one thing about Chris now, I, well, I want to get him on here. Most of y'all may not know this, he is an avid outdoorsman, and he, he grew up in outdoor stuff, and it goes back to his dad was an outdoorsman. So give us, a, tell us about yourself and all. Well, I, I love being outdoors. Uh, when I was young, uh, if I got in trouble, my punishment was I had to go back inside. <laughs> uh, so I love doing everything outdoors, but uh, I really grew up fishing, and fishing inshore, trout and redfish here in our bays, mostly back in East Bay, mm -hmm. and some in St. Andrews Bay. Uh, and really got into hunting a little bit later, in my mid-teens, uh, but really, really took to that. And we've, we've gone from hunting on friends' properties to leasing land, and now we've got a piece of property that we, that we call the farm. Mm -hmm. And I really like to spend a lot of family time there and get a chance to uh, chase turkeys and white-tailed deer and bobwhite quail. It's a lot of fun. And that's up around Abbeville, up yes. in Alabama yep. and all. And so many of us in the Panhandle go up to Alabama hunting, fishing, and all, so I, I use part of it. But your dad, your background, your dad, I remember he grew up around the Tampa, St. Mm -hmm. Pete area, so he was exposed to a lot of good fishing down there. He enjoyed it, right? Oh, sure. Yeah, he, uh, he, caught, he grew up fishing for speckled trout with his dad and his brothers mm -hmm. um, that catch sheep's head all out in the, the mouth of Tampa Bay and mm -hmm. under the Sunshine Skyway Bridge. Mm -hmm. uh, he grew up hunting uh, some uh, the public land uh -huh. uh, down there, so he kind of... I'd say he, he roughed it a little bit um, growing up hunting, but really got back into it when, uh, when I got back into it uh, in my teens. All right. So now we got, he's got all kinds of pictures. I've been to his office and everything. He just, you love going to see all these pictures and all, but we're just going to start at random. Sure. At, at random. And are you going to tell us about these pictures and uh, tell us who all, tell us about this first one right here. Well, that is, uh, of course, me with a, a turkey and my dad and my oldest. It's a few years ago. He's six now. Uh, I think he was three in that picture. Mm -hmm. uh, but that turkey, my dad and I were hunting together uh, in the morning and we had birds all around us, never could get one to come to us and cooperate, mm -hmm. which is one of the more rewarding but frustrating things about turkey hunting is you can do the same thing to different birds and they don't necessarily react or right. respond the way you want. Mm -hmm. So uh, dad decided to come back to the trailer and I said, dad, okay, I'm, gonna, I'm just gonna walk this way and you go that way and I'm gonna walk this way. And I sat down kind of in the hedges and just, lightly purred and mm -hmm. you know I, I didn't really make a whole lot of noise and it wasn't maybe 30 minutes later the bird came out oh man and so i took that bird and that was right um 
that's probably an hour or two after. Uh, so that, I know that's rewarding. That's cruel. All right, let's jump into fishing. How about a wahoo? Okay, so this is a great story. I just bought a brand <laughs> new boat. You got a store and have a picture. Right, I just bought, a, just bought a brand new boat. Okay. And we decided this was not far from this time of year in 2015. It may have been late February. Mm -hmm. And I had some diehard fishing buddies, still do, of course. Mm -hmm. um, it was east wind, a little, little stronger than today, blowing 20 knots. Ooh. And we said, let's just go. 29-foot boat, they can handle it. That's what it's built for, right? That's right. So we went. We were taking water over the T-top on the way out, coming in the backside of the waves. Everybody was having a good time, grinning ear to ear. And we trolled. Uh, mm -hmm. We ended up off Destin, and we were trolling, and we caught Wahoo. Uh, we stopped, and we caught Amberjack. And we turned around to come back in about five-foot seas, and we decided, well, we ain't coming back in five foot seas. <laughs> so we ended up nosing south into, or north into, uh, into Destin. Okay. So we came in Destin and then ran back in the ditch. Okay. okay. But that was the, that was a, that was a that hard, was... hard earned Wahoo. And that, as, as a young man, you can, you can do things like that. that, that, <laughs> yeah. that that's great. <laughs> All right, what about those black and white pictures? All right, that's my brother, uh, who is now the chair of the Bay County Chamber of Commerce. He mm -hmm. has his work cut out for him. <laughs> but the St. Andrews Bay Yacht Club uh, puts on a Stone Crab Invitational Tournament opening day mm -hmm. and has for, I'd say, five or six years. And five or six years ago, I, I went for the first time, uh, placed second that year, but uh, we've won it several times since. That's it's, cool. That's enjoyable. Isn't it? it is. You got to reach your hand in there. We call it going elbow deep. <laughs> but it is fun. Oh, that's cool. All right, one more this break. That, <laughs> that was this year. Okay. Uh, my uh, son, my oldest. These are your three boys. That's right? my three boys. That's okay. Christopher Jr., that's Sawyer, and then Carter in my arms. Cool. And that was earlier this year, actually just a couple weeks ago. Uh, oh, we were right. up there. Christopher was with me in the stand. He likes to get up early and go. Good for him. And uh, we took that 10 point. Um, he was, it was the cold, we had that cold, the front that moved through mm -hmm. a couple weeks ago yep. where it was bitter cold yes. in the 20s, 30s mm -hmm. afterwards. Well, that was the next morning. And they, I saw, I mean, all kinds of buck movement. And this was the third buck I saw cruising through, and uh, we took it. Oh, great shot right there, too. We're going to talk about a shot, too, but let's take a break. We'll be right back. Okay, welcome back. Before we get back into pictures, uh, Chris was telling this story before the show, and uh, and I want to go ahead and talk about what's fresh on our mind. You know, so many times we talk about taking young people out hunting and fishing, and you know, being a mentor in, in the outdoors. And and uh, he was telling this story. So uh, so tell us about Dennis Landingham before this painting back here over his left shoulder, that painting in green. A good friend of mine named Dennis Landingham did that painting, and I know I know the Landingham family a very long time. So tell us your story. Well, I know uh, Dennis and his family are grieving from the loss of Dennis's father. So uh, first off, my condolences. I know they were very very close. Yes. Uh, but Dennis was a, a mentor of mine, and probably didn't even know it. Um, and I think a lot of people are mentors to folks, and they may not know the kind of effect that they may have on them. But Dennis really taught me. My dad introduced me. To fishing and Dennis really was the first person to teach me how and the kind of work that it takes if you really want to learn how to do it right mm -hmm. the early mornings the preparation just the stick-to-itiveness that you have mm -hmm. to have and we would fish the same lure all day <laughs> every day artificials we very rarely use live bait occasionally we would but mm -hmm. we would fish with grass shrimp with a, a quarter ounce or eighth ounce red jig head mm -hmm. for trout all day yep um, or a top water mirror taught me how to walk the dog. Yeah. Um, and we even went camping a few times down to St. Joe and Presnell's with his family mm -hmm. uh, out on Crooked Island, which I'm not sure how we ended up doing that, but we did. Uh, but I'll, I'll never forget him lugging two car batteries <laughs> and a shark rod um, all by himself, and I was just kind of yeah. trailing around. But yeah. that was uh, very thankful for that experience that I had and, and the, the friendship that I. Yeah. Uh, was created with them. And we talk about that. And as a result, what are you now? You're, you're doing some of the same stuff. Yeah, about uh, 12 years ago, I joined the board with Big Brothers Big Sisters in Northwest Florida. And mm -hmm. about a little over a year ago, I took on a little brother myself. Okay. I, I know the power of and the impact of mentoring mm -hmm. and what that can, how that can change a life. You don't, you don't generally hear the good news. Yeah. 
uh, and the things that happened uh, because of, uh, of a relationship. You generally hear the bad news and the things that happened in the absence of that relationship. Mm -hmm. Uh, but I've got a little brother. He's over in uh, in Parker, and he's doing great. And we go fishing. Oh, first awesome. first the first time together we had, we caught a trout on a grass shrimp. Oh, that's great. That's great. Well, all right. And, and as a result, he's going to be a lot better of a person too. As he, he, yeah, he, he's that's got great. he's got work but, cut out for him. But yeah, sure, got challenges. Yeah. All right. Here we go. Let's get back to these pictures now. Tell us about this one right here. Okay, that's uh, my, two of my boys and their buddy Max. <laughs> Uh, we caught some serious trigger fish Woo. that day. They were monsters. We thought we had big snapper on. They were so big. Uh, and, and some beeliners, of course, too. It got a little wet that day. You can see the docks wet. We were dodging some thunderstorms, but they were having a blast. Oh, that's cool. That's cool. All right. And that is a nice, um, I believe that's a s snowy. It's hard to say after they've been cold. It's snowy or a yellow edge. I think it's a snowy. Yeah. Uh, first deep drop trip we ever took. We thought we were, you know, we knew what the heck we were doing. Uh -huh. You know, we dropped down. We brought us up a snowy grouper. Yeah. Well, it's been three, to it. three, three, four trips ago and not catch anything. You realize you may not, but <laughs> that was a good trip. Uh, that was and really one. opened our eyes to deep water, deep water fishing, deep water grouper mm -hmm. in that you know seven to nine hundred foot range. Wow, y'all was that deep? Mm hmm Good. We weren't hand cranking. I promise. Oh, uh, yeah, I bet. Wow. Okay. Okay, now this was a trip where it was just like fishing a barrel. Uh, we left, it was uh, my friend's birthday, and we left the dock at late morning, slick, calm, glass, same area, and just started wearing them out. And we turned around, and, you know, we were back at the dock by 5. And that's a two-hour run uh, oh, to get where we were going in that boat. Um, but well, that a, was that's a fine trip. That was <laughs> that's what, fine. again awesome. Been that, back to the same area since, and had, well, a trip like that that, that just spoils you because you think you're gonna do it every time. Yeah, you don't do it. We every know time. better than that. <laughs> All right. Now, that's my buddy uh, Sawyer, my middle child. We try to go down uh, and catch lobsters once a year. A few things like marriages and childbirth have gotten in the way <laughs> yeah. over the years, but um, that's my fearless middle child, bare hand in the the lobster. Oh, cool. That is good. I, I bet they enjoy that. Uh oh. So my buddy Blair Sale and I uh, went out and took this gator. Uh, he is an avid gator hunter. I've I've done it a few times, mm -hmm. but this was on the Apalachicola River, not yeah. Uh, it's depicted you in the, on the map there. Uh, picture. Were y'all on the lower end down there? Or? We were uh, put in at. Um, Abercrombie. Uh, no, it. Um, we were we were actually close to the bay. Yeah. 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 With lower end. Okay. Uh, but that I, was a heck of a story. How, how, how long was that one? How big was that one? That one was a little over eight feet. Eight, eight feet. Blair Sale. He's mm -hmm. an outdoorsman, too. He sure is. Let's see now. What is this one right here? Uh, that's a big old snapper. <laughs> that is um, a fine one. Yeah. Yeah, we managed to catch one or two like that um, a year. It, uh, it's amazing. It's, it's it, You can... I guess say anything you want about the uh, the regulations. They're tough to live by. I don't like being going fishing and not being able to keep them. But yeah. the snapper seem to get bigger and bigger. Uh, and and you know you, you're right. They they're healthy right now. Yeah. They're, they're really really healthy. And I I get a kick out of uh, out of folks going sending pictures in on a regular basis and all. Now one thing when you're talking about preparation and all, but when you go on these trips, you really get set prepared, don't oh, you? Oh, absolutely. It's a uh, it's well you're thinking about it probably for a month before you yeah. go or a week before you go. But an offshore trip, everybody who, who goes knows it's it's a couple days preparation. Mm -hmm. And you gotta have the weather right. And today it's of course be a nice day to be I out. I know, there. you gotta go to work, don't you? you yeah, absolutely, no, that's okay, won't, we can just go. Your boss won't let you off. <laughs> but you can be like your dad now, your dad's retired. Well, semi-retired no, semi or by, by retired, no, no, he's not not at all. But uh, he, he's, a, he's certainly at a point um, and we talked about this a little bit beforehand about just general uh, lessons learned in business, but you surround yourself with good people. Mm -hmm. uh, and he has surrounded himself with good people mm -hmm. and he's able to, to maybe break away and do some things that he wants to do uh, on his own time mm -hmm. and trust that the business operations are gonna be run like they would if he was there. Yeah, and I, I know he's a, he's a good shooter. I've heard about it. He's, he's beyond he, a good shooter. I've, I've heard he's almost legendary to some of the shots he has made. He, uh, he, he is a mathematician <laughs> um, by hobby and interest, and he loves that aspect of shooting. Uh -huh. Likes to hunt as well, but it's, for him, I think it's more 
about you know the the equations that go into which rounds, which which rifles. Yeah. Um, he's gotten in a little bit of preloading, uh, but no, he'll he'll stretch out there and shoot one. What are some of just a couple of long shots he's made distance wise? Uh, uh, he could ring the gong at 400 all day long. Oh, he's serious. Um, but he'll stretch out to 800. Are you serious? Mm -hmm. that, that, not many people do that, folks. That's, that's, that's fascinating. All right, we're going to take a final break. Be right back with Chris. Okay, welcome back. Today with Chris Kramer, just having a great time and all. Let's get to our fishing game forecast. Our time today brought to us by Blue Water Outriggers down in Port St. Joe. Looking at 144 to 344 this morning. We just passed it, but this afternoon, if you're working with Chris, he'll let you off at 205 to 405 to go catch that big fish or shoot that big buck. All right, so we got all kinds of things. Uh, we got one more fishing picture we want to show, and then we're going to talk about, okay, okay, tell us about that one, Chris. Okay, this is Catch of the Day in the News Herald a few years ago, but about the same time as the Wahoo picture and the same gentleman, Chris Cumberland, in the picture with me. But uh, we had been sword fishing that night, just he and I, and we were out around the spur. And we had tuna all around us, really didn't know it. We were catching blackfin tuna, and there was oh, some big man. elephant in there that, that we didn't, again, we didn't really recognize it. But we got on the, we did catch a sword pup that night and some blackfin, but got on the troll early, and we're headed back towards the squiggles. And before daybreak, we had this tuna crash a naked ballyhoo on the, the short um, rigger line, and it went all the way over the, uh, the wake and crashed and actually hooked up on a, Islander Ballyhoo. Wow. And we fought that fish for about two and a half hours. Finally got it up to the boat. Didn't realize what we had until we saw the big sickles. Mm. Stuck two gaffs in it, brought it in, and then we, we were high fived and oh, headed man. home. 100, have, 140 pounds. Uh, nice one. I, I have to go all the way to Venice, Louisiana to do something like that. He does it out of here and all. But anyway, that, that's great. So let's get, let's get to it. Let's talk about. I have a GMC truck. I, my dad, uh, when I was growing up, I always bought Chevrolets. I got all kinds of stories about him buying with his car salesman and all. But uh, the business itself. But before we get to business, let's talk about the optimism and all. I've seen you display it and all about what's going to happen here in, in Bay County and all. Everybody's still optimistic, even though we've been through a terrible time. Well, that's Bay County. Yeah. Uh, we are, you know, I, I love seeing people, you know, pull their bootstraps up and just get to work and not wait on somebody to help them, mm -hmm. uh, but get after it themselves. And I, I think some of that is, um, you know, we lose attention because we're getting it done ourselves. Mm -hmm. But that, you know, we, we're, we will need help. Mm -hmm. uh, we will need all the assistance we can from state and federal. Uh, but the optimism, it's always been that way. This area has always been a giving community. Mm -hmm. um, I'll give you an example this year, the empty stocking fund for the Salvation Army that my family's partnered with my, mm -hmm. um, generally raises $200,000. Mm -hmm. And there was some thoughts that maybe we, they shouldn't do it this year, but it was repurposed. Um, that fund hit half a million dollars. That's amazing. That's amazing for the, for the hurricane uh, yes. relief and all that. That was something that happened. But the, the first, you have to have belief. Yeah. Uh, and you have to believe in your heart that we will be better. And mm -hmm. I, I believe that, mm -hmm. that it may take five years, seven years, ten years, but we're going to look up and this area is mm -hmm. going to be unrecognizable in a great way. Mm -hmm. So I, 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 I'm very optimistic. I, I've seen some posts you made and all and, and, uh, and heard some things you've said and it sort of reflects how, how optimist feels, feels that way. Y'all had a lot of damage at your store. Mm -hmm. I mean, a lot of shop damage and all that, but y'all bounced back and like so many of us, we, we just keep on, keep on. We sold our first truck seven days after the storm. That's amazing. We had to, had to sweep the tile from the roof away. We did it with Wi-Fi, yeah. hot spots. Yeah. We did it uh, on generator power, uh, but we did it. And I know so many businesses out there, downtown, all, all, all around Panama City, that were operating as shells of themselves. Yeah. And you gotta, you gotta put all your pride aside, and oh, you yeah. may not be able to deliver the kind of service that you would expect, but you have to be, get open, and you have to get after it and you'll be, you'll be rewarded for it. I believe that. And then the new truck, tell us about the new stuff coming Speaking out. Speaking of rewards, yes. you need to reward yourself with a new pickup truck. The brand new 19 Silverado uh, is phenomenal. Uh, and one thing we're doing this month is 2,000 additional dollars for trade-ins on Chevrolets. 
So no matter if your vehicle had storm damage, no matter how many miles, no matter the condition, no matter the year, we're going to give you the value plus $2,000 mm -hmm. plus any available incentives on that vehicle, mm -hmm. on all new Chevrolets. That is awesome. Those, those, I, I've got a GMC truck. I love it. I mean, they're, they're so dependable. Mm -hmm. Mine's a 14 model. It's about, if my wife's probably watching this morning, it's about time to trade, don't you think, honey? Have I you? agree. We'll make it happen. <laughs> but uh, great folks down there, Jack Simmons and that crew down there, they're just fun to deal with. And uh, I don't have time to get into the uh, trailer hitch story of my dad. I, maybe I'll tell you all this story on tomorrow or so about the trailer hitch. The last thing he would do when uh, haggling back and forth with the salesman, how about if you put a trailer hitch on? And back then, it was a big deal because yep. you had to pull that boat and you usually had a car to pull it in. So we all, I guess you all have trailer hitches come built in nowadays. They so. do now, <laughs> but, but if not, maybe we can throw we one can, in for you. you know, I've always been good to work for and all. Uh, one of the things, too, uh, you all are open from when to when. We're open seven days a week, uh, Monday through Saturday. Uh, sales open 8.30, and we're there till 7, Sundays 1 to 5. And what do you get to do? You get now, now that you know Chris and, and the folks that run the place and all, you know, you're talking about outdoors, when you're talking about pe giving people, you're talking about mentors and all, so you know, that, you know the folks a lot better than you would have if not, not getting to meet them and all like this. So we're so glad you came on. Well, thank you for having me. A family man, University of Florida graduate. That's we're right. In, we got, hadn't got in there, and you got you got out of there right before Tebow and all of them won a the national championship. That's you, right. I, pre said, I prepped them for excellence. You prepped them for excellence and all. And best, uh, best four years of my life. I met my wife, Pam, mm -hmm. uh, mother of the, our, our three boys, yes. who certainly rules the roost. Yeah. Uh, Where's she from originally? She's from South Florida, just uh, north of West Palm in a town called Port St. Lucie. Okay. I know exactly where that is. And uh, how about outdoors? Is he... She loves it. She awesome. has, we, we actually, when we were in Gainesville, we'd run over to Crystal River and Cedar Key and Ooh. catch trout and redfish. No kidding. Yeah. Well, that's the basic of a good marriage right that's there. That's right. <laughs> Chris, thank you so much for coming on, buddy. Thank you, sir. And if you get a chance, run down there or out on 23rd Street and got a big American flag. It comes back from a, it comes from a great, uh, well, Tommy Thomas, your granddad, it, what a giving family that this has always been. Generation after generation, they give. Folks, thank you all for watching Panhandle Outdoors. We appreciate the viewership. You do something good today for your fellow man, and God bless. Thanks for watching America's only daily outdoor TV show, Panhandle Outdoors with Winston Chester, featuring hunting, fishing, and other activities and information to help you enjoy the great outdoors. Join us next time for Panhandle Outdoors.